What I'd love to see happen in my lifetime is a real change in the way we make things so that we can use our planet's resources more efficiently. I'm Ayantika and I develop cutting edge materials to help solve one small part of climate change. This might look like an ordinary metal tube, but it's actually made from a metal composite material that my organization Tysix developed. It weighs as much as a packet of crisps, that's 36 grams, but it will carry the weight of an African elephant. It might not look like much, but this little tube can do some pretty phenomenal things. Our composites are made by combining two different materials. So we use a ceramic fiber, which is as thin as a human hair, and combine it with a metal so that we get a final composite, which has the best properties of both materials. This composite can be used instead of steel on planes, in the landing gear, in the engine, and on the wings, and can make the aircraft a lot lighter. For example, if we could make a 30% weight saving on landing gear on all large aircraft across the world, we could save 3.7 million tons of CO2 emissions a year. That's the equivalent to the carbon dioxide absorbed by four and a half million acres of mature forests. I came into engineering by chance. Uh, it was never something that was planned. I knew that when I was studying, before I studied my A-levels, that I was interested in maths and science. So for my A-levels, I chose maths, further maths, physics and chemistry. To be honest, I also chose those subjects to try and avoid writing essays, but it turns out I do have to write a lot now for work. I wasn't sure what I wanted to study at university, so I chose maths because I thought that would keep more options open for what I wanted to do in the future. Even whilst I was at university, I didn't really know what I wanted to do as a job, so I tried looking at lots of different companies and different industries to try and get a feel for what they were really like. Because I couldn't find a business that felt right for me, I decided to start my own company. And that was pretty nerve-wracking. I did that for about six years. I learned an immense amount, but ultimately the business didn't work. I think sometimes we are afraid to talk about failure, but actually they are some of the best learning experiences you can get. So I grew up in India and by pure chance was born into a family that was fairly well off. In countries like India, you get to see what poverty is really like. Now my family worked a lot with Mother Teresa and so growing up, I knew that helping people was something I wanted to do, but in a broader sense, and so that's always been in the back of my mind. Engineering is ultimately about designing, making and testing. And you don't have to have a degree in engineering to do all of those things. I wasn't necessarily the best math student in my class. I could see that some people maybe understood it more easily than me but I just had to spend a bit more time working on it than them. Maths is effectively a language, and as with any language, the more you practice it, the more you get better at it. And the more you talk maths with other people, the more fluent you become. I probably thought I wouldn't use 80% of the maths that I studied at GCSE or A-level, but it turns out that I've used pretty much most of it at some point. Whether it's helping to fight climate change or helping to fight social injustice, maths gives you an incredibly strong toolbox to then go out, use your skills, and your passion to help tackle these wider challenges.